What's going on? What's going on? I told you what happened, and basically it's one of those situations where I say it's going to happen. It happens. Um, we all remember Atil Lopez. He had come out, and he was talking about how, quote, you know, he wanted to fight, um, let's say, uh, he wanted to fight the best, pretty much. Like, he's looking at fighting the Devin Haney's, or the Tank Davises. You know, he just, and he's, quote, not going to cherry pick. You know, he's not going to cherry pick. Um, he's going to fight the fights that the fans want to see him fight. And um, I guess then later on, he had made a comment basically about Devin Haney, talking about it. Oh, well, you know, he's going to try to fight Devin Haney next if, quote, you know, the negotiations for his mandatory doesn't go well, which makes no sense. You know, it's your mandatory. So if things didn't go well, what happens is you get put into a situation where it goes to a purse bid and whoever wins the purse bid wins it. And the splits already set up, whether it be 75, 25, or whatever it is. Whoever wins splits, the splits, wins the purse bid, though, they're basically in charge. It takes it out of your hands because since you guys can't come up to an agreement, things are set up in a way where things are going to be done in order to have that fight. And um, in one of the comments, you know, that didn't make any sense. But, you know, I was kind of talking in, in, in a space of, you know, just give the man the benefit of doubt that he does want to fight the best out there. And I said... It's still not in his best interest to talk like that just due to the fact that, you know, if you're, the people, your handlers have other plans or have other things that they want to do with you. When that happens, you end up looking bad because of the things that you that you were saying, you know. So when it came to this particular situation, I guess the IBF quote, you know, is saying that Teofimo Lopez has to fight his mandatory next. That's what they're saying. So it's, you know, some you know, people didn't, if you don't know boxing, you're going to just say, well, you know, he has to fight his mandatory yet. You know, then. Unless you know how to, you know, the inner workings of boxing go, you know, that's BS. You know, he would have had options. You could pay him side to step money. Just like when Terrence Crawford was trying to go for undisputed, right? He was trying to go for undisputed and Ndongo had to fight Lipinets next. And Lipinets was and down goes mandatory. So what they did was they gave up in the step aside money. And then they agreed that whoever wins that bout would fight Lipinets next. If that didn't happen, then obviously they would get stripped of the belt and Lipinets would still be able to fight, I guess, for the belt next. That's how it usually that's what you know usually you know that's what happened before. And Top Rank definitely could have pulled off something of that nature in order to let Teofimo Lopez fight Devin Haney. In a big, huge fight, which technically is also it's a unification bout. And we all know what they say. Unifications trump mandatories. You know, and all the sanctioned bodies have said that they're going to do everything in their power, you know, to, to put those in the forefront. So if you really, quote, wanted to fight Devin Haney, you could have negotiated that fight. You could negotiate to see if... I don't believe Devin Haney would have fought him. You know, because I don't believe his handlers want him to fight Teofimo Lopez. Saying nothing about the fighter. People get all butt hurt when you, you know, say things like this as if you're trashing the fighter. I'm not trashing the fighter. I'm just saying the person that's in charge of him, um, uh, Eddie Hearn, that's not how he works. That's not how he operates. So that's not going to change just because of Devin Haney, you know, because that's not a no guaranteed win for Devin Haney, especially with a heavy power puncher like that, you know. And so the way Eddie Hearn works is unless it's a big money fight where he's going to generate... Even in a big money fight, he might still not do it because he might look at it long term when it comes to, uh, uh, let's say, Anthony Joshua versus Dante Wilder. When Dante Wilder agreed to a, 20 mil, a 12 million flat fee, <laughs> that fight still didn't happen because he still, you know, sidestepped that bout and went and fought Povetkin instead anyway. You know, because long term, he didn't see that as being condu the best, you know, thing for him as a promoter. And I guess Joshua as a fighter long term. You know, so when it comes to this, when it came to uh, uh, what's the what's his name, Tevin Farmer, Tevin Farmer, contract was almost his own. Um, Javante Tank Davis team offers him two million dollars to fight Javante Tank Davis in a unification bout on pay per view. Eddie Hearn tells him that amount they're offering is laughable, and tells him not to take it. He doesn't he doesn't use this as leverage to get money. You know, he doesn't use this as leverage. To get a, a, a better contract from um, from the zone, they didn't even get a contract. It was just his next fight; he was going to get paid half a million dollars, which was against Diaz, and he loses that fight. So now, 
he walked away from 1.5 million plus back end <laughs> to take half a million. He doesn't have his belt, and he might not even get his rematch. You know what I mean? So that's how they op. You know, but that's how he operates. So I don't think this was a situation where he was going to let Devin fight Teofimo anyway. You know, but regardless, Teofimo could have still went and actually tried to negotiate that fight if it was truly something that he wanted. You know, or his team could have done that. But like I said, you got to be careful with the way you talk because when it comes, just like Eddie Hearn has his way of doing things, Bob Arum has his way of doing things. Bob Arum has his whole plan set up for Teofimo Lopez already. Him fighting his mandatory. After him fighting his mandatory, he's probably going to fight another, might fight one more fight at 135, or he might jump up to 140 to get one fight up at 140. Then after that, he's going to fight for Undisputed at 140 pounds under top rank against a top rank fighter so if he loses he's gonna lose a top rank fighter where the top rank fighter you know his top rank still owns and holds all those belts but regardless of what happens in that fight top rank wins but they're gonna gamble with it because it's gonna put him to a situation where Teofimo wins that bout and becomes undisputed at 140 pounds he really pushes to a high another high to another level it's gonna put doesn't matter what's going on at 135 He's undisputed at 140 pounds. If he can do that, it doesn't matter what anybody got to say. You know what I mean? And he's in 100% full control. And if they want it, they can come up to 140 pounds. And Tank is not going up to 140 pounds anytime soon. Ryan Garcia isn't going up to 140 pounds real soon. Devin Haney isn't going to go up to 140 pounds real soon. What they're actually going to wait for is for Teofimo Lopez to lead the division, move up for those belts to be free. And they're going to see what they can do as far as getting those belts. Then they're pretty much going to start talking about tank, 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 tank. And that's all it's going to be. And they're going to try to somehow build him in a way that Eddie Hearn likes to build fighters in a way that does not work in the United States. It's been proven from day one. It still doesn't work. And it's still not going to work in the future. And unfortunately for Devin Haney, until he realizes this, he's going to start regressing in popularity. He's going to start regressing as far as the viewership. Are going to continue. He's not going to continue to build as a fighter. It's not going to happen. It's going to be great for the internet talk, just like Anthony Joshua. We talk about him all the time on the, on, inter, on the internet. But when it came time for him to fight on, in the United, on the United States, he didn't get viewerships like that. He never got viewerships like that when it came to the United States. He can't do a pay-per-view. He can't do a pay-per-view in the United States and then be successful. He could fight um, Tyson Fury in the United States, and that fight would not be successful in the United States as a pay-per-view. And it would still be a fight where even when it comes to the gate, even when he came and fought in the, in the United States, beside, I think he made, what was it, what did they sell, like 4,000 tickets from the United States? Everything else was only from the UK when he fought in New York. So just because you're on, 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 people are talking about you consistently on, on, online, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to, you know, resonate into you being successful in the ring as far as viewerships or as far as gates are concerned. Not necessarily going to be the case. And I think this is going to be his problem as well, that he's going to find out that he has, you know, and when he finally, hopefully is smart enough to leave that situation, he's going to be in the back end. He's going to be behind people like obviously Tank, even Ryan, if he came up, you know, Ryan, if Ryan fights Tank, I mean, that's going to be the end of that train. But Teofimo, he's going to be behind Teofimo Lopez. He's going to be behind, um, what's it called, um, Primetime Colbert that's coming up. He's going to surpass him. Um, Jerron Ennis. He's going to surpass him. And those two fighters are going to surpass him in the next 24 months because he's under someone who does not know how to promote you. That's number one. And number two, because he's fighting in a close platform. But, you know, back to Teofimo Lopez, he's been put into that bad spot I said he was going to be put in. So now, quote, even though the IBF said, quote, you know, you need to fight your mandatory, people know what's up. People are going to know what, you know what the deal is. People are going to know that if he really wanted that fight, he could have made moves to make that fight. And it's going to make him look bad. He's going to be sitting there saying, well, Doc, they told me I had to fight my mandatory. They told me I had to fight my mandatory. And no one's going to care. You know, Teofimo Lopez, the best thing he can do right now is shut up and keep his mouth shut. He needs to keep his mouth shut and his father needs to keep his mouth shut. Stop talking all this A-side stuff when there's another guy that's selling out stadiums on a regular basis, another guy that just did 240,000 pay-per-views, which is Devonta Tank Davis. Anyone who tries to act like they're bigger than him or they're above him in any kind of way, when it comes to his numbers, you're, you're, you're a moron. You look stupid. You look stupid because he'll put a fight on your hometown 
on the same date that you're was sick of fighting and he'll outsell you. He'll destroy you in sales. And it doesn't matter who he fights next. He's going to destroy whoever Teofimo Lopez fights next in sales. If Mike Ryan Garcia fights somebody else, he's going to destroy him. If Devin Haney fights somebody else, he's going to destroy him. So all this Teofimo, I'm the A-side stuff, stop it. Okay, stop it. And long term, in the next, I say the next 12 months, if he does fight for undisputed at 140 pounds and wins, he's going to be okay. But from right now until then, it's going to get ugly. But whatever. To each his own. Everybody makes their own decision what they want to do. But for now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.